Good morning, everybody. How on a day? There are, there are attack dogs. They don't send their attack dogs. And I see the title of today's show. The title is simple. Why now? This is the question we must ask anybody that is suddenly jumping onto the train. Jumping onto the train of the political situation of this country. Ten years ago, ten years ago, ten years ago, they were not interested. Eight years, six years ago, five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, they were not interested. So we asked them the same question that we've been asking everybody that has come to try and lie to us, who won't come bamboo to us. Now one simple question we ask them, why now? Why now? Why this moment? Why now? And it's simple. Personal interest. Personal interest. It has nothing to do with you. Nigerian people, please go back to my videos during NSAS. Una go follow these celebrities. Una go follow these celebrities. Eh? Enter in. You people, Nigerians have been following celebrities, famous pe people for how many years now? Where they don't lead Una reach? We want to cut this point. They teach you a new dance. Do you think I don't know how to do new dance, or you think I cannot pay somebody to come and teach me new dance? Eh? You think I cannot pay somebody to come and sell you new dance? Because I know new dance is not the treatment. I know new dance is not what you need. You understand me? I know that new dance is not what you need. Not what you need. I dedicate myself. I give my life to stay on the right side of history. Hmm? Only. Nothing for this world will make me sell that part of my conscience. No kind noise. Peter Obi is a PR guru. Peter Obi used to be editor-in-chief of a publication. So he know PR. So he know how to manipulate people with PR. You know. I give you Peter Obi is the Obama Obama of Nigeria. All talk, no action, no substance. Not be so all of us for this world follow Obama after all the noise. Eight years of Obama presidency. What did he get black people in America? What did he get the world except onto the brink of a third world war? Where? The same, during answers, I warned you people, nobody, when army reached toll gates to open fire on innocent Nigerians, where were the celebrities that led you there? Was one celebrity there, one, when the soldiers arrived? Oh, they don't run with their security, go inside their house, go relax. When I go run, go for it, they go run, go for it, go relax. Now, now, bullets go meet. And when a bullet meets now, enough now die. Does that mean they will stop doing show for these big people or politicians to mourn? Nothing. When the anniversary reach of NSAS, how many of them? I mean, Faust and Macaroni. Apart from those two, how many they remember on ourselves on the 20th? Nobody. Why now? Let me start first. I'll give you people, you know, my followers, I respect. You people are not in lots. We are not in the millions. But we are in the thousands, the hundreds of thousands that want to know something. We want to know the right thing. Hmm? What we could do to remove ourselves from this issue. You know. So, yeah. I'll give you the story of a man that tried to change the world. Hmm? I'll give you the story of a man that tried to change the world. His name is Jeremy Corbyn, and he's from England. 
I want people who won't know the history of how you start political revolutions to go and study the movement of Jeremy Corbyn for the many, not the few. Jeremy Corbyn's movement was for the many, not the few in England. Although Jeremy Corbyn was already part of the Labour Party, the Labour Party establishment no belief in his socialist ideas. Because the Labour Party, even though they claim to be for workers, were nothing but a bunch and are still nothing but a bunch of elites. So Jeremy Corbyn, what did he, what did he do? He started going around the country, sharing his vision, his ideas with the working class, the poor, and the young people of England. Because of Jeremy Corbyn, over half a million new members applied to join the Labour Party. With this his movement in the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn rose to be the flag bearer of the Labour Party. He was elected leader of the party. Elected leader of the party. Even at that, even at that, only Jeremy Corbyn has been a lifelong member, lifelong member of the British Labour Party. But because his ideology was in contrast with the ideology of the labor movement, they sabotaged Jeremy Corbyn till they, they removed him from his position in the party. They, even the election that would have brought Jeremy Corbyn to prime, they sabotaged his election by labeling him an anti Semite. Al Jazeera did a big documentary on this whole. A situation. If you want to follow it, it's called the Labour Files. The Labour Files. You can check it on what was it called? On YouTube. It is on YouTube, so you can check it anytime. If you go look the now, now four part documentary because the story big. <coughs> The story big to sabotage Jeremy Corbyn. The Labour Party was working with the government of Israel, with the government of UK, with the BBC. They are rolling lies in the society about him. Your own party sabotaging you like that. Deep following his members, threatening the life of his members inside his own party. And this is England. England, where they say that they are civilized and their politics is straightforward. Not be Nigeria. England. Please watch the Labour Files. Because it's part of our political education and development. Now, Nigerian people are not part of those people that are putting blame on your head. I will never blame you, the people of this country. Because from 1966 to 1999, over 40 years, I've been 30 something years, they refused for us almost 40 years to participate in politics. In fact, we did not have the right to association. So during those days, if only four people gather somewhere talking, Ami had the right to come there and disperse the four people. We did not even have the right. So we are politically young. 1999, 2023 is 24 years. We are young. But what we are doing wrong is that we are staying young. We are refusing to grow up. So we are acting out of emotions. Now let me bring it to what I'm talking today. I will not blame, blame Peter for insulting my father, saying that me, I'm saying something about my father. He's dra dragging what me, I'm saying to my father. Because Peter is uneducated. Peter don't know, you know, you know, he's not educated. Now illiterate, you know. Peter don't know anything, you know. He knows how to do all those, his uh, song, wearing the teeth from Oyibo people, remix, remix him to change somebody's song to his own song. So he knows, you know, so, you know, I mean, now, when you come outside, nice many people can't look at. So, he can easily... Blah, 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 blah. Peter Obi, as president of Nigeria, is not the people of Nigeria. That is not a people movement. When I say the people of Nigeria, hmm, I mean you, I, everybody. The, see, nobody represents everybody. That you're a Nigerian does not make you the people of Nigeria. You are just a person. The people is a collective. When I say people, I mean collective, collective idea. 
the collective idea of Nigerians, then will remove us from this problem. And what do I mean? I mean us engaging in the totality of our politics instead of looking for Messiah. Let's engage in the totality of our politics instead of looking for Messiah. Now, let me tell you people something. Was the Tinubu become president of Nigeria before he became this powerful? Was Tinubu president of Nigeria before he became this powerful? Tinubu is already an extremely wealthy and powerful man in this country. He is looking for more wealth and more power. If he does not get that more wealth and more power, does that mean he still doesn't have wealth and power? Does that mean Tinubu cannot continue to heap problems on the people of Nigeria? Does that mean Tinubu's influence to control our destiny in the biggest economy in West Africa, be in the whole Africa, Lagos State, does that diminish it? No. Why? Because we are neglecting to take power in Lagos State. So Tinubu, even if he lose federal, will continue to own Lagos State. We continue to own the Lagos Assembly. We continue to own the labor, uh, the Lagos commissioners, the governor, commissioner of police. Every parastata will still bow down to him. They will still land grab anywhere they want, land grab thief people house, anywhere they want thief people house, and do anything we in life for Lagos. I think continue to do anything we in life for Lagos. What I'm talking about here is a complete people movement. We as Nigerian people must be tired. If we're not tired, we must be tired of fascism. All our life, what we have known in this country is to see these rich people divide themselves into two groups every time. In the, all over the world, the rich people in every society, they divide themselves into two groups. You understand me? They divide themselves into two groups. Put some kind of differences and have you choose between them for life. You choose this rich person. When you are tired of this rich person, you jump to the next rich person. When you are tired of this rich person, you jump to the next rich person. Forgetting that rich people have the same interest in society. That is different from your own interest in the same society. You are not class conscious. You aren't class conscious. You are not class conscious. And that is what is missing in our participation. All of us believe, say, if we just go sit down for our house for three years, sit down for our house for four years, when the election time comes, we read some headlines, look what in TV and newspaper and social media pack it for us and they make our decision. Doesn't that make you a fool? Doesn't that make you a fool? When has the news in this country ever told you the truth? All of us as Nigerians, we complain all the time that our news is full of liars. We complain all the time that social media is full of liars. But then, we sit there in our houses and read these things and watch these things to make decisions about our destiny. Who is the fool? Who is the fool? Who is the fool? My solution to Nigerian people's problem. People say, what's your solution? You never come up with a solution. That's a lie. That is a lie. We are the MOP. Movement of the people. On Instagram at MOP Center. <laughs> and for three years, we have been working hard to create our own political party. And why have we been creating this political party? Why myself and no go carry card, go join one of the political parties? Because we understand that we have to bring the power to the people. Only the people can save themselves. We cannot join any of the establishment. Anybody, anything that has involved itself in the situation that Nigeria is today, we cannot bring ourselves to work with them. We must bring ourselves to do the work ourselves. We must build the platform, the political movement that will liberate us. And in this political movement, we are not looking for a messiah. Aisha will never run for political office. 
It is not my calling. I am not a politician in the sense of public service. I am a politician in the sense of organizing. That's why I'm working hard. I am the pro tem chairman of the movement of the people. I didn't just wake up one day and look for one big man to line up behind. I'm not lining up behind any big man. Look, ask any of the big men in this country today if she don't come to their house to see them. If they have any business with she don't, if they can even call him for their they can't call me. For what? Why? I am on the side of the people. So the people of this country, let me tell you what we must do. We must invest our time, our resources, our energies, right, into organizing ourselves so that we can become a political movement of ourselves. We must engage, and this must come from the professionals, that the professionals of this country, those of us for this country that has had enough comfort with this oppression, instead of using that money to go and be chasing all the old small girls, I'm not saying don't chase them, but don't use all the money. Instead of using our money to go to club all the nights, all the time, using our time to watch only film and uh, go to church, we must also dedicate time to political organization. Or I'm sure that 99 percent of the people that are shouting that they want change in this country are not part of any political organization. What political organization are you a member of? If you're not a member of any political organization, then shh, you're not ready. This country needs at least 80% political participation from its citizens because of the level that we are. But we sit down watching TV, we want to copy the people they see for America. How do they live their life? Carefree life. We are not in a carefree situation where we can just talk about politics during election like they do in America and England. You are not in that situation. You are not in that situation. Your situation is the one that you need full participation. Now, I will tell you the kind of young people that don't understand what I'm saying. With the, oh, Peter B, Peter B. I don't dissect when I'm ready when I day in England. But I will dissect when I again here. You see, many of the young people in Nigeria, many of the professionals in Nigeria that are working today, that have families, never, I'm 40 years old. So I'm sure that in my generation, hmm, 95% of the people that went to school in my generation, bribe lecturer. 95% of the people that went to school in my generation, at one point or the other, that schooled in this country, bribe lecturer to pass exam and test. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now that's the problem. They don't program on that, not to understand how to do things for yourself. The way your government cannot do anything for itself. The way your government cannot do anything, cannot even pay salary without going to borrow money, is the way you have been trained. You have been programmed through this substandard education. It's not your fault. I'm here to help you to raise yourself to the level that you're supposed to be, to your full potential. But big ass, not going to let you rest. Latest dance, not going to let you rest. Latest TV series, not going to let you know. You know, this is the same thing that distracted you in university from doing your test yourself, from reading your RRM, your recommended written material, from reading it yourself, from understanding your education properly yourself, because you won't go club, you won't go party, leads, they happen, this one, they go, one girl like you, one boy like you, you refuse to concentrate. So one lecture a come day, when they tell you all the time, every money go past you. You go say that lecturer is a what, is a good man, it they help your life. That's how you people have been programmed to be. That's why in this situation that you are, instead of you to take the mantle in your hand and start organizing yourself into the force that should be feared by all these people, including Peter Obi himself, to be feared by them, you are here following them. Yes, because it's the lecturer that has told you he wants to help you pass exam. Now that is for the best of you. That is for the best of you. That you actually want something good for this country, but you are too lazy. You know, you are not you have been programmed to be too lazy to see that the power is with you and you can do it yourself. So you want to mortgage your power, the way you mortgage your mind and your education to the lecturer. You know, why Nigeria is like this. No professional in Nigeria is a professional. No professional knowing work. 
you will get people for a banker get degree in English. A person with degree in English, they teach for school. A person with degree in a, a botany, they work for public administration for a, a, a works for Ministry of Works. You know, everything is upside down. You know, nobody knows anything in this country. You know? Not so that nothing works in this country. So that's for the best of you. You've been programmed that way. They don't do that. They don't fuck on up that way. They've made it in that way that you don't understand how to do for self. You think that that is the life. That is the way things are. You understand? Why they send their children to England and America where their children are trained, honed? Because they don't feel bribe those lecturers. Their children at least know how to do work. Then you bring them back here to rule over you. You shake behind them. You shake behind them. Mm. Now, the worst of you are those ones that follow based on self-interest, based on what you can gain. You understand? They are willing to do the work that are unwilling, they never ever, they don't care about anything. I'll give you the story of Labour Party. I'll give you the story of Labour Party and me. Okay, now let's talk about this for the menace. You've been popping up here talking rubbish. You campaigned for Buhari. You've been talking, where is the evidence of that? I campaigned for Buhari. Where is the evidence? How can, who can say that? Say me, I'll be idiots. Buhari jailed by father. How can I ever campaign for check I'm, check I'm a bastard. I'm not a bastard. Maybe you, you are a bastard. As you are here insulting, trying to insult your father on behalf of those people that are destroying your life and your father's life. So maybe you, you are a bastard. But I'm not a bastard. You understand? I am not a bastard. Now I'll continue what I'm telling you people. I'll give you the story of this Labour Party that you people are, that uh, is carrying your, uh, this thing. Mr. Labour Party uh, President, that time, Abba Wakiri, I don't even forget his name. They called a the protest in 2018 when APC increased foil price. You see? They called the same protest in 2012. People like me, we joined the protest. Because of political naivety. That's why I don't blame anybody for making political mistake. Is with who I blame are those that have the resources and the wherewithal to know better, but refuse to do better. I will never make excuses for a billionaire or a multi-millionaire because you have the resources to know better and to do better, but you refuse to. So no. But you see, we that things are hard for. I understand that you are trapped in survival mode. It is difficult for you to see the big picture. Me and you, we can always converse. Because me too, I was where you are once. So I will never look down on you. You understand? I will never look down on you. Now me campaign for Tinubu for 1999. 1999, I was barely 18 years old. Why? Because I knew him with my father. I knew him with my uncle. I followed him. I did Yoruba politics. Yoruba will be free from this Nigeria. Because I was a fool. I was a fool in those days. I was young. I was naive. I believed in what I could see. But the more I understood and learned, because I didn't just stay in that position of privilege. Say, eh, eh, I don't know Tinubu. Eh, I don't get mad for Lagos. Eh, everybody, eh, see me, I do anything where I like. Eh, I didn't stay in that position thinking, yes, eh, I don't arrive. Let me be the best. Eh, our big boys. While I was there, I continued to study. I continue to read. I continue to develop my political consciousness. Because if what we are saying is true, that we are looking for we are looking for the best way to be, then we must all continue in a certain way, you know, to work and be better, to be better knowledgeable. So I continued. And the more I continue to study, the evidence in front of me proved to me that these people are not what they say that they are. And I can guarantee you that Tinubu cannot say he has seen me in almost 10 years. 
more than 10 years, if care is not taken, he cannot tell anybody that I saw Shewun here or Shewun called me there. And in more than 15 years, he will tell you that Shewun will teach you political anything. He will tell you, oh, ha. Because as soon as I saw that what was happening there was false and selfish, I stepped away. It no longer matched my political consciousness. So that's growth. And I accept that for everybody. You must continue to grow. You must continue to have sense. You cannot be stuck where you are thinking you are doing the best without studying to know what's going on. So if you are staying where you are politically thinking you know, then after I said to After me, I don't tell everybody, say, listen, the only way we can save this country is not by Messiah syndrome. We must find a movement that not only replaces our president, that not only replaces our president, but replaces the senators of this country. I mean, wait, what, is, what do you think people think? What do you think will happen for this country? She will not say, we will put one president there. The, even if I like when I put Jesus Christ, if I like when I bring Muhammad and make him the president of Nigeria, he will collect in ministers, put in cabinet. Do you think he can do anything under a PDP and APC assembly, Senate and uh, House of Assembly run by PDP and APC, all 36 states run by APC and PDP? All state assembly run by APC and PDP. What do you think Jesus Christ and Muhammad will achieve? Anyway, let me continue the story I'm telling you people. Let me continue the story. Because I want you people to understand the scope. So I was with Labour Party in 2018 when they called this protest. I don't protest for 2012. I don't protest. I see, say, when we protest, did the whole hard work. They went to do meeting behind our back, this same labor union, the labor union, the neck of the labor party. Went to do meeting with Jonathan behind our back, came to an agreement behind our back, refused to call us to a meeting. The way they called us to a meeting before they started protest, they didn't call anybody to the meeting when they ended protest. They accepted on their own protest over. Then I started to investigate protests. I started to study protest to see what part of the world protest has ever changed anything. Then I realized, first of all, 70% of the protest of this world is staged by the rich. 70% of the pro protests that you see on TV is staged by the rich. The second big thing I learned is that no protest on its own has ever achieved anything. No protest on its own has ever achieved anything. The only kind of protest that achieved anything were protests that were backed by political movements. So I said to myself, okay, no more protest. Show. Stick to your political movements. Find a political movement that will move Nigeria forward. You can look at the Arab Spring, for example. Let's take Egypt. Because these things are right in our faces. The, the evidence they our face. So we will not look far. Egypt, they started from a general. They protested against military dictatorship. They didn't have a political movement to back their Arab Spring. Look at all the nations that did Arab Spring. They are worse today than they were before their Arab Spring started. Why? Because they were not prepared for power. The people that were removing the government were not prepared to take the government. So they remove the government and there is a vacuum. The same people they were fighting against come and take the government. In Egypt was first the Islamic Brotherhood. They first received Islamist terror. Islamist, where if I say no more at this war, no everybody on hijab, everybody in the mosque. <coughs> they fire military dictatorship come back. General Sisi is the one ruling them in Egypt today. Mm -hmm. So now, <laughs> this meeting with Labour Party. They say, we'll come protest again. I said to them, I'm not protesting, no. Labor union, the labor movement, 
uh, whatever they want to call yourself they have a political platform they say yes this was in 2018 this was in 2018 just five years ago if you remember very well when the increase for when APC increased for for the first time they want to protest hmm? listen you know, this was in 2018 hmm? now in 2018 i sat down with labor leadership no what am i saying 2018 k 2020 how am i saying 2018 to slap 2020 in 2020 2020 september this is 2020 september i said to labor party i said that you people have the biggest unions on that in this world under you in this country rather you're not get the biggest union not only do you have the biggest union you also already have an a, a registered political party why do we continue to protest without your without your political movement willing to take that protest to the ballots meaning to the election let's take power from these people let's mobilize the people of this country into the labor party let's do this work once and for all why only protest i'm tired of protest i'm not protesting with you in this meeting let's discuss not how to face these people only in the streets but how we face them at the polls if anybody in labor they not born anybody where for labor party may say this thing a lie they not born any i still saw the uh, leader of labor party in benin uh, Aladi Tanko. i will not expose what he said i can't because i say what he said and the session wins if i say what he said about your teacher saint peter will be the head of his own party so i know that they are not together let me not throw bomb because you pass you don't know what is going on in this country people are mortgaging your lives for personal interest but you sit down here refusing to do the work for yourself who are these people if we sit down as nigerian people and organize our own political party not for the famous people like shown to become president not for the famous people or the rich but for are you trying to say that because you are poor you don't have leadership skills are you trying to say that because your father is not known you don't have leadership skills this is what i'm tired this is why we diminish ourselves we mortgage our ancestors our destiny for these people because they are famous and rich you have been bamboozled by fame and wealth i'm telling you that the saviors of nigeria are the nigerian people themselves the people that are going through the pain of this country are the ones that can save this country not the ones that are causing it or benefiting from it see after peace square don't do enough show for all the rich men of this country and all the politicians of this country now today peter want to tell me say he know what is good for nigeria we will we abstain from that scene we refuse to koto we refuse to bow we refuse to sing any song where they will like no politician can hear any of my song and smile that's why my song is not on the radio because they own all the radio that's why my song is not on the tv because they own all the tv that's why all these social media boys don't praise my songs. You know why? Because these motherfuckers own them. After they've played the game, they've hyped them up. They sit down here with you, coming to tell you today that they love you. Why didn't they love you 10 years ago? Ask Peace Square, why didn't they love you 20 years ago? When they were jumping up and down with PDP all over the place. Different, different politicians. Why didn't they love you then? Now, today Nigeria is poor. Now, today Nigeria is poor because all of you, I don't know what is wrong with you. You don't know what is, you God don't know what is wrong with you. Now, today Nigeria is poor. They say, hey, Nigeria has never been this bad. Is this worse than civil war? Is this worse than civil war? Nigeria has been through civil war. So, Nigeria has definitely been worse than this. And it can still get worse than this. Don't let anybody bamboozle you. Do you think we've not been here before? We have been here. Go and hear, go and study about Operation Wet here. Go and read about the first republic in this country. You people don't want to be historical. You don't want to know who you are. You want to listen to Lagos' latest song. 
You think your situation, it is Grammy Award nominee that will solve your situation? You think it is knowing what Kim Kardashian is doing that will help you? The more time you are spending watching Kim Kardashian, watching Big Brother, what the more time you are doing all these things, is the more time you are destroying, you are digging your grave. Your, your life doesn't need these things. You are an African man. Your reality is different from the reality of the people you are watching on TV. You better understand that. The same people that put on... Imagine Nobuli Gwe. This, imagine these rats. Nobuli Gwe. Not a rat like a rat, small boy, where they say small rat. No, but a rat like a snitch. A fucking rat. Why do they fear when doing answers? I mean, they write. I don't post that for my story. They write me doing answers. Hey, but they are threatening me all day. Why do they give and courage? But today, instead of making write me again, say, why do they talk about Peter Abid now a candidate? Make her explain to him, which I know. He went online to chase clouds. These rats! You see, they love you. The people that put together Big Brother, they all, they, they all they put Big Brother for TV for Namona Watch. Big Brother. Now, this Big Brother, what does it solve in your life? The same people that put Big Brother, yeah? they can put Big Brother on TV in a way that young Nigerians will come on TV and talk about the problems of Nigeria. Talk about the solutions to the problems of Nigeria. We, the viewers, we will vote for the best solution. We will vote for the best solution and also pressure the government to implement those sol solutions. Social media has that power today. We can put Big Brother on TV in such a way that he's talking about the issues that are facing us. And it will still be exciting. Trust me. Imagine young Nigerians talking about their police experience on TV. Then discussing the ways we can, that we can quell police brutality in this country. And we, the viewers, vote on those things. Or talk about child mortality. Talk about maternal mortality in this country. Our healthcare system, our bad roads. Talking about it, young people put on TV, but then you put them there to shake their yash, to be naked, to be having sex, to be doing nonsense. These are the people, and they saw, they're all there making money from it. Peter Okoye is here telling Nigerian, selling, basically, like a pastor is doing. Yeah, bring 50 naira, God will give you 1 million. Bring 100 naira, God will give you 20 million. Peter Okoye is telling you to come and use 20 naira to buy flat screen TV. 50 naira to buy... The, is that your, you see, these are, these are charlatans. Men that can do anything for money. So they want boy come and say, Tiffy, mama money to come play the game. Peter the Helam. This is the kind of people you are following. So this kind of person that can do such a thing. This is a degenerate. Is it the one that will tell you what a good... So talent is not intelligence. There are many talented people in this world that are stupid. Trust me on that. This is the problem we have as black people. This is the no problem we have. We think when you have talent, you are suddenly intelligent. When you are famous, you are intelligent. That's what Jay-Z is saying, be business smart, Mogu. You, how any of his company, okay, tied out, where is tied out today? Follow the evidence. Don't be following the amount. Do you want to know what me have invested in MOP? What members of the MOP are me? Men that nobody know in this country. I'm the, only, I'm the only person in MOP that is famous. I'm the only one that people know. But there are people in MOP politically stronger than me. Nobody knows them. Investing their life, putting money, putting their time, putting their efforts. Somebody will wake up one day that doesn't put time and effort. Just, are, the only time and effort they can give your life and your situation is typing on computer and talking with their mouth. They can never give themselves. They can never give themselves. It's just, it, and these kind of people won't tell away anything. People that disgrace themselves and their family online. That they are twin brothers will be fighting because of money. Chasing themselves out of the house and not even able to keep it secret. Coming outside. Hey, my brother. Is, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Talking about each other's wives. Disgracing yourselves. You, is that the mind that wants to tell you about how you progress in this country? Are those the kind of people that want to tell you how you will progress in this country? People that come and insult each other's wives online. Brothers, twin brothers, because of money. Because of money. Because of money. They come and insult each other online. Their wives, their family. Online. Me and my family don't fight before. I would, I dare you to find us talking about our wives 
is sorting ourselves. You can tell you we are fighting. People can talk their own. <laughs> now that's what the person wants to come and talk about my father. I brought my father down. That's why I tell you people all the time. When I go, they make noise. Sherry is jealous that they are talking about you are using his father. He, I'm not jealous. I just really know these boys. I know they don't really respect my father. Because if they respect him, there's no way anybody will be saying he's the new fella. I keep telling you that. Fella is a human being. Was it, Sorry. Was a human being. He existed. Fella was my father. And I ain't born me. I did with him. When somebody says he's the new fella, he's basically taking everything that fella is. Meaning, saying also that he is my father. He's Femi's father. He's Yeni's father. He's the owner of Kalakuta Republic. That is what that means. You can never hear anybody in, in uh, Jamaica say, I'm the new Bob Marley. Because they respect, they know respect. So any small thing, everybody don't yap fella. Everybody don't talk. But at the same time, we all love fella. I know it's bullshit. Because I grew up as fella's son. And I know what love really is. You understand? And I'll tell you for a fact. No love for fella in this country. You are all just envious of a man that can stand against the storm and still be. So now that you try to destroy him all his life, you couldn't destroy him. You have to succumb to his power. You have all succumbed. Not that this is not love. <laughs> it's not love. It's surrender. You have surrendered to the power that is fella. That's all. I don't see love anywhere. I don't see love anywhere. I don't see love anywhere. So I'll continue the story of Labour Party with you. So I told them, are you not ready to take power from these people? Let's mobilize people of this country. Let's take the Senate. Let's take the Assembly. You have the numbers. You have the workers. We have the theories. And the fact that we have the theory doesn't mean we deserve the power. That's another thing. When you have knowledge, the only, um, the only use of knowledge is to raise people up to make them also knowledgeable. So we take this knowledge. We go and make people leaders with it. I don't want followers to choose me as a leader. If I wanted to be a politician, I wouldn't want idiots to vote for me. I will raise the consciousness of my constituency to the level that they are all leaders by their rights. Then when you are picked, when you are a leader picked by other leaders, you, then you will be put to the task that you are there to do. Not that when people don't know what you're supposed to do. Don't, people that don't know, that don't know anything, pick you. Then you can bamboozle them. That's what they like in this country. That's why in this country when you say, hey, this politician is doing like this. Somebody will say, if now you in call. On my radio show last week, we were talking about bullion van in Tinubu's house. Talking about, one person called the show to say, eh, if bullion van comes to your own house, you call. I said, am I Tinubu ni? Have I held public office before? Am I in control of certain national interests? Even when I criticize George Ware, say George Ware's son, not suppose they play for Liberia. They say, if not my son, Unko, am I a president? Don't you understand that the responsibilities of people with public office is different from the responsibilities of ordinary citizens? But because you are a Christian and Muslim, and your, past, your pastor and your imam has told you every Friday and Sunday that you are special, you suddenly start equating yourself with everything in the world. You think you are special. You, you, you are if now we are talking about Tinubu, you're talking about yourself. We're talking about Atiku, you're talking about yourself. We're talking about Peter Obi, you're talking about yourself. Are you in a position to run a country? You're not in the position. So stop using yourself to compare these people. So I sat down with the Labour Party people. In 2020, you must run, you must bring political. They are. They vehemently refused. They vehemently refused this man. In fact, not only did they vehemently refuse, they were not afraid. They were so afraid by my outburst at that uh, meeting. We did this in Ojoju. Elephant, have you? Where have we go? Now, Elephant House, have you called that place? Eh, no, no. Uh, uh, people that make cloth union, they are building. The building, textile mills building or something. That's where they had the meeting. I know all the labor movement comrades were there. I know. They were all there. Now, these, these people, I'm not joking, refused vehemently just in 2020. In fact, they told me, Oha, that if I don't want to support their plan, I can leave. 
They say because nobody can mobilize Nigerians. Only labor union. Uh, what is the Only labor can mobilize Nigerians in this country. So only labor can call for nationwide protest. That was the, the, the belief that there was their power. Until NSAS, just the next month, NSAS now happened. Clear their doubts. When Nigerian people came on the streets without labor and shut down Nigeria. They refused. But suddenly, overnight, they are now interested. Not only that, that day they called off the protest. Sorry, I've, I've jumped myself. That night, after that meeting, the labor leadership called off the protest because they were afraid that they could not control where that protest would lead to. Because people were now calling for political, for a political movement to come out from labor. We were calling for it. They refused. Suddenly, they don't give all of their rubber. They don't rubber all their pocket for labor leadership. I mean, I know what I'm saying, no? and I will repeat it because I've experienced it. And nobody can tell me I did not experience what I experienced. I experienced it. So I will tell you what I said again. You know, only the people of Nigeria can save this country. Until you, I, all of us in this reel, listen to me very well. Stop all this nonsense we are doing with our time. And start joining political organizations with the hope of becoming political parties. Creating political movements where we begin to pick leaders among ourselves. Among ourselves that are going through the things that these countries... What are people saying? They go say they pick poor man. Say they do like them. Say nobody can. Not lie. We allow people that have been tainted by their closeness to these people that are destroying this country. Let me tell you something. Nobody can change anything from within PDP. Nobody can change anything from within APC. You cannot. Nobody can change anything with the establishment politicians that are in this country. Anybody that has held any political position in this country, no fit do anything to change this country. Why? Because it's compromised by interests. Why not ever see Shogode for Obasanjo house? What kind of politician goes to visit Obasanjo? What kind? Obasanjo is a genocidal maniac. I'll say it. Let me, sorry, repeat it. Obasanjo is a genocidal maniac. How can a genocidal maniac be the one to tell you who your next president will be? Somebody that killed people in Odi? Do you people remember anything in this country at all? Any politician that goes to meet Obasanjo is letting you know that he wants to continue the status quo in this country. He wants to continue the killing of Nigerians in this country. Didn't Buhari go and meet Obasanjo during his own time? Have you forgotten that Obasanjo support Buhari? One of the life for years, say me, I support Buhari. I never supported Buhari. I was against Jonathan. And being against Jonathan is not support for Buhari. The way I'm against Buhari today, does that mean I'm, I'm for any I'm for Tinubu or I'm for uh, Peter Obi? I, I, I cannot openly say I am for Shobore, but I prefer him to all the other candidates. I prefer him to all the other candidates. And I will say it, I don't really lie. I cannot openly say I am for sure there, like campaign for him because of my position in the movement of the people. It is impossible for me as the chairman of my party, or rather the pro chairman, to openly support. But I prefer him to any of the candidates. But I also know that we Nigerians have let him down the way we are also letting MOP down. You want to put your worry? I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, don't. Uh, they want to make you. They will sacrifice your life away. Let them be there. Let us see. And for let me tell you, people, I I am going to start. I will not vote for him. In fact, let me not tell you, people. Make it up. I say the situation won't spoil the election. I will not vote, but I'm going to do anything in my power. Prayers. I want you people to get your wish. I want another rich man, be it Peter Obi, be it Atiku, be it. I want. In fact, let Peter Obi win for you. I want him to win so you can experience it's a political education. You will be educated in politics. You'll be educated. You'll be educated in class consciousness. Maybe that kind of presidency, when he betrays you, when he lets you down, when he drags you further below where you are right now, maybe you become more politically conscious. You know? Because when our fathers too are like that. That's why you put a line that Nigeria has never been this bad. Who do you want to tell that to? 
that Nigeria has never been this bad. Since I've grown up, since I've been born in this country, there were Nigerians that have always been on the streets. There have always been slums in my life. Okay, am I back up? Am I back up? I hope so. Am I back? Am I back? Can you guys hear me now? Let me just say I can hear you, then I can continue. Am I live? Can you guys hear me? <clears throat> anyway, I'll continue. I'm sure you guys can hear me. I'm sure you can hear me. It will or when I post it, you will see these parts that you have missed. Just like they sweat because of these goats. Eh? I just wake up now. See other people they talk rubbish about their father. They talk rubbish about their mother. They talk rubbish about their generation for Twitter. So today, we're not going to hear what. And I must hear this word when I don't want to hear. Today, everybody could hear her. <clears throat> Who told you that Nigeria has never been this bad? Maybe it has never been this bad for you and your family. I just want to keep telling everybody, you are not everybody. So you see, that's why we're fella, they talk for 70s and 80s. You people are now lying. This was, you know, too much lies in this country. Everybody is not lying. Fella is a prophet. Fella is a prophet. Fella was my father. My father wasn't a prophet. You are lying. My father was singing about what was happening to the lowest of Nigerians. Fella, they sing that time about what they see for the poorest neighborhood in the country. Because Fela understands, say, you are only as rich as the poorest person in your community. You are only as strong as the weakest person in your community. My father understood that. And he saw what was happening to them, and he sang about the things happening to them. But you people, because you are in denial, you want to lie to yourself, you want to lie to future generations, you are calling Fela a prophet. The only reason was that that time wasn't happening to you. It wasn't happening to you. That's why you lied that fella was a prophet. When all he did was think about what was happening then. 49 sitting, 99 standing. What was prophetic about that? There were people already riding the Molwe in those days like that. What was prophetic? About no road. But everybody that time, they lived for Surulere. Surulere was the lucky of those days. Ojo Elegba, Yabab. Uh -uh. Then Ben Bruce family in Ayabadi, they stay now. You see, there, were, there was no people who were not living in VI because they, one, they couldn't afford it. It was mostly government. That was where the white people were staying. They never gave money to join white people that time. Everybody was in mainland. Now, mainland, they born everybody. Waiting be the island. Who are many people they born for island except Lagos Island? How many people? Now, mainland, they born all of us now. Me, I was born in Surulere Hospital. I think he's no longer there now. You know? Everybody was born on the mainland. But, you know, people would live for the backside. You know, they know people would live for Agege, for Mushin, you know, all those areas. They don't send those ones. Those ones, then they see them. You feel me? So, they call the Fellana prophet. Because they refused to see what was happening to the poorest of people in society. So, today we, we are lying, we are saying the same nonsense. Nigeria has never been this bad. Nigeria has never been this bad. People have never suffered like this. <laughs> Just because of not come, they touch you. So that's what you must change. Don't wait till suffer touches you. Go and look at the history of Nigeria, how people are living in this country in 1960, 1970, in the northern part of this country. As at 1966, there were only four graduates in the northern part of this country. Four graduates as at 1960. Four. Do you know what it means that only a region full of millions of people, you kind of suffering, people must be suffering to only have four. But we don't we don't relate to the northern our northern brothers. We don't relate to our northern sisters. It's only people in the city. We don't look at the rural areas, what they call rural, because they refuse to develop it. They, they, we don't look at these people how they've been living for for decades. But now we Flood the entire lucky ATM, no, they walk. Mm -hmm. You can't log into your bank app. Now you know that Nigeria is bad. It's, it's now you know Nigeria is bad. Now, no way. 
Now no way. And that's why they continue to bamboozle all of you. You must learn to take responsibility of your country. You think it's only politicians that are spoiling this country? Okay, let's face this crisis we are going through now. The so-called cash crisis. Why? What is the reason why this crisis is really there? Should I tell you why? But nobody will speak the truth. Because they don't send you. The reason why this crisis is like this, apart from government incompetency, is because bank MDs are all rogues. They are all thieves. They are all exploiters. We don't have enough banks in this country. That's the problem. We don't have enough banks in this country, enough branches to service. How many people in this country have bank accounts? Only 48 million bank accounts exist in this country as of 2020. And this is from the CBN itself. When they say make CBN, see, information comes out to us. Let's keep the information. Let's not be acting like idiots, refusing to grow up. Grow up. You have a responsibility to build a nation, not to twerk on TikTok. Yes, it's fun. It's exciting. People, the Oyibo are looking at you and clapping for you like a monkey, in case you don't know. Because they see your country like a jungle, like a like a dungeon of hell, where you're all running away from. But you're on TikTok, so you can gather money to run away. You happy? That's what we're all doing. Parents, parents. See, now, young children, between the ages of 18 and 27, all you young people, please, I'm not talking to you. This is not your responsibility. Pe young people between the age of 18, in fact, age of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way to 27, please enjoy your young self. Twerk all you like on TikTok. Live your life. Do all the drugs you feel like. Get into all the trouble. You only live once, man. Don't let anybody take your young side where you have the energy to see life, enjoy, experience it. Experience this life. Live free. Be carefree. That is what young people must do. But then, all of us from 27 to above, are you mad? Grow up. You have a responsibility. Look at your country. Look at your nation. Take your talent and stop thinking selfishly about yourself. Take your talent and face your nation. Face your responsibility. Your real, which is the development of that nation. For your children yet unborn. Forget that the generation before you dropped the ball. Yes, they dropped the ball. We, are, I've said it, I've seen it in ancestral visions. Whether we like it or not. The ancestors, ancestors have told me. This generation of Africans, you are the liberation generation. You are the liberation generation, whether you like it or not. And you will do it by force or gently. It is your choice. It must happen. Now you can, they've given us the choice to either do it peacefully, sensibly, in a way that we can achieve greatness or we can either pay the blood price. It's a fact. But this generation is the last generation that this will continue. This is the liberation. It's your destiny. I'm telling you. It's your destiny. That's why they spend billions to distract you. The African industry of distraction, aid, is billions of dollars deep. Billions. They need to distract you. They need to keep you out of your mind. Because they know that as an African, anywhere in this world, if you are in your mind, when I say keep you out of your mind, I don't know, I don't mean crazy you. I mean keep you out of your mind that you don't think of yourself. You don't think of your real situation. That you live in a fantasy. Oh, I can be the next Jay-Z. I can be the next Kim Kardashian. And I can be the next this. I can be the next... So you live in a fantasy. You, you remove yourself from your mind, from your reality. Why, 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 what is all that? They know, so they have to keep you distracted. They have to. It is billions is spent, but it can only be So, so I'm telling you, when I say the people of Nigeria, I'm talking of we, the working class and poor people. I'm not talking of those people with accounts in Panama. 
anybody with account out of this country cannot rule this country. We don't want. We want people that are fully invested in this country. What is wrong with you, Nigerian people? Don't you take yourself serious? People are treating you like animal. You two are treating yourself like animal. What we want is not all these lofty ideas. What we want is simple. And the simple things will get us very far. It's quickly about developing our healthcare system. What will such a politician be telling you? What, what will developing our healthcare system mean? It means developing 774 local government areas with up-to-date world-class healthcare services. How many Nigerians would that employ? Millions upon millions. Setting up the emergency centers for these healthcare, healthcare centers. Millions of Nigerians, the drivers of the ambulances, the pickers of the emergency call, the doctors, the nurses, all our young people will not be running away from this country with medical certificates. So now let me continue with about this bank I'm telling you. So you sit down there, you are hailing them, they are in private sector, you think private sector is not a thief, it's not adding to your problem. MD of banks have built mansions, they own mansions all over this world. They have private jets, but they've not provided adequate banking services to their people. The investment to move market women from cash base to digital, they can't invest it because it takes, it takes investment. They have to dedicate time, you know, to send people to the market, uh, uh, um, invest in seminars for the poor. But they don't look, they don't, they don't invest in the poor. Nobody invests in that. In the market women, in the bus drivers, to put um, in every bus you enter in London, if you don't have cash, there's a place you can touch your card. You forget that this transport system we are having in Nigeria is private. Danfo is a private business. It's somebody that owns it, putting you in Paco bus. Millionaires own those things. Look at their trailers. Container falling on people's heads, moving the goods of the rich all over this country. Their tankers exploding, killing everybody. That's why, they, that's why Dangote invests more in APC. You'll be donating 2.5 billion to APC and PDP when they're looking for campaign. But Unilag is there. They have been looking for 1 billion for over three years in endowment. They can't find it. Why do you think so nobody can hold them to account for destroying this country? This country cannot be destroyed without the help of the private sector doing their own job to assist their brothers and their friends and their sisters and their family members in the political system destroying this country. Is the job of a bank MD to own private jet or to give Nigerians adequate banking service? But we don't ask those questions. The same people that will go and play in this criminals end of the year party. In these criminals, I, I can never. I can never. The only banker that I can work with, that I've worked with, is Kim, Kim Bello Sagi. And that's because he is a, uh, why would I put it? He's a patron of the arts, like, you know, father of my, friend of my family, so we have a personal relationship. But based on just banking, I, want it, I can never. What can, what can they entice me with? Okay, yes, I work for Tony Lumelu, but it wasn't personal. I was doing this. Those is that is entrepreneurial end of the year. I have to come and play for the students. I don't mind. It's for the people. You know, this is my intersection with the rich. Anytime they decide to look at the people, I'm there. I, I don't mind. But for them personally, oh my dead body, I have no business with them because they're letting this country down. They are all letting this country down. They take everything that we own only for their own personal development without looking out for the development of the people. They are all billionaires. All of them, they hail them. Dangote sells us the most expensive cement in the world, in a country where we are the poorest. Can you afford cement to build house? It's the reason why government cannot do public housing. It's too expensive. Look at your telecommunications. They are denugas that you are hailing, all these people. Can you use your phone as you like? Have you seen how internet is working in Europe and America? Now we are, we are hailing Elon Musk for bringing Starlink to our country. Nigeria is the first country with a lot of Imagine! Yeah, so we cannot do our own Starlink. Are these the rich people you look up to? They want to give you the, the worst service 
for the highest price while paying you the lowest wages? Do you understand that? There is nobody in this country that lives off their salary. No matter who you work for. You're all working for all these billionaires, working for all these banks. How many of them pay you enough money to live a decent life? You are all banker and tiller, banker and chef, banker and baker, uh, accountant and uh, event planner, uh, accountant and shoemaker. You are all hustling. You no longer know the value of work. They've removed responsibility and dedication from our lives, except you are close to the top. So everybody must do mago mago. We are all in, they promote the service industry in this country so that we are all their slaves. Nobody can talk the truth. Nobody can blame the bank MDs. Look at TV, everybody shouting government, 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 government. Yes, MFLA is at fault. But so are the owners of these banks. Because if they had provided adequate banking services, then they had done the seminars, because we've been shouting cashless Lagos, cashless Nigeria for over six years in this country, about six years now, they've been cashless, cashless. But they were only talking to themselves in VI and Lekki, and those of them that go to exclusive places. They were not thinking about the poor people of this country. Because if they were, they would have done seminars. I mean, there's, they say some states, not only two banks, they the whole states. Because those states are poor. So the bank is not there to elevate people from poverty. They are there to extract money from where money already is. Because if they were there to elevate people, they would love those poor areas. Why? Because those poor areas have a lot of possibilities. Who is outside? Sorry, my dog is barking at my puppy. That one is the puppy. He likes to make noise. You know, so please, when we were talking about Nigeria, we are talking about Nigeria from a place of serious analysis. I don't be joke with anybody. We are not playing with anybody. We are not, let me put it, we are not playing with anybody. We are not fighting with anybody. You feel me? All these private sector, but then private sector now owns light. Look at what is happening with light. The same people that own light are the same people that sell diesel. Go and look at the families that bought the, the light, that bought our infrastructure for electricity. They are the same people that own oil wells, that are selling you petrol for your gen. How can you have light? But you think they are separate from government? You think there are good people there? Anyway. I hope you people learn today. And I'm still 